Welcome back everybody. In this video we'll be looking at this project I'm working on called Plinko. It's just a mini game and it'll be for the uh, Solar Surfer game that I looked at uh, I think last week. Um, and yeah I'm, I'm helping out the developer make some mini games and this will be one of them. So uh, I'll just show you how the game works uh, and then I'll show you how I made it. So uh, if you've seen the prices right before this is a game from that TV show. Um, it's a very simple game where you just you you have these uh, tokens basically, and uh, you can you drop it in at the top, and then as it goes down, it bounces off the pegs, and then at the bottom has uh, different prizes basically. So it's a it's very uh, luck based, but there is uh, some fun in the fact that um, you can win a lot. Um, so. Currently, obviously, I'm losing, and I have one token left. Uh, and once it loses, it brings you back to the uh, the main menu. But uh, just like I've won five tokens in, if I keep winning five tokens, then I will increase the amount of tokens I have. And uh, I've made it so it keeps track of the high score. Um, and it's very simple. It's uh, the uh, I'll I'll run through the code with you uh, very soon. Um, but uh, yeah, it's basically like this. So I have control of it. It goes left and right, and then I can also drop it down. Yeah, so you can control it going left and right. It moves in two increments, and uh, it it stops it from going any further than it is allowed to. And then when it drops down, it basically just every time it goes to the peg, it then moves it diagonally left or right. And when it's at the right, it can't move right any more right. And when it's at the left, it can't move any more left. Um, uh, yeah, this is a very simple game. I I want to update the um, I want to update the the text so that it's a, a unique font. Just because I'm going to upload this to my itch page, um, but obviously in the actual mini game of uh, Solar Surfer, it will be whatever Solar Surfer says. Um, but yeah, I want to make this UI my own, and I might make a video on on how I do that because it's very simple and uh, I haven't. I haven't done that before. Um, and I also want to make a video on making some music for it, just a simple uh, track, just to make it, uh, just to show you how I would do that. So, uh, yeah, so let's now look at the code of Plinko. So I've made it so, obviously, it has a, like a load up scene. Uh, I'll just rename that to load scene. And basically, what happens is it hides the player, it loads the game. Um, and if, it, if there isn't a game to load, then it just moves it into the title screen. Uh, and the title screen saves at the start. So obviously once it's loaded, it saves. Um, and this will mean that it saves the high score continuously. Uh, and then when you, so when you load the game, it, it, goes, it always goes to the save point. You might want to keep that in mind. Um, so that's why I have the hide before and after the save point. I then have the, um, the flashing... Uh, like an overlay that flashes, so it flashes the Plinko on the screen, uh, and then it and then it sets the tokens to free, uh, just so you have something to start with, and then tells you the high score if you have one, and uh, and then you get to start the game by pressing any button, and then it starts the game just by chucking in here. <clears throat> so now we're in the main the main Plinko game. Uh, it basically, it, I've kind of been quite smart with this in the fact that I. I've made it so it tells you your tokens, uh, and it has this, uh, the reason why, I, I, you can ignore this uh, value for now, it's, it's just so that um, it only does one button press at a time, and I'm controlling the button presses by using the um, attach script to button. So the first thing I do is I remove anything attached, and then I have a start thing so that I can go back to the title screen at any time, and this means that, uh, you know, if you're on a really high like a winning streak and you're on uh and it's going to take forever for you to finish the game then you can easily finish when you like and it's mean that when it's a mini game in solo surfer uh it can basically act as like a money system so if you bring however much in then you get however much out depending on your on how well you did yeah so it then obviously that's just the uh the start button 
And then the next button is up and down. And if you notice, there's nothing on up and down. So that means it's locking out the movement for up and down. And that's a very useful thing if, for, exa for example, if you have a platformer where you don't want the character to jump. Um, let's say it's like a like a like an exciter bike is that what it's called where there's a you know a, a little bike a motorbike that uh as it moves along you know you go up ramps and you do tricks you don't want to control whether or not you jump it's the ramp that does it um and maybe you do want the jump and maybe you don't but obviously you would lock off it off by pressing the jump button here or if it's a top down 2d game you can lock off the uh up and down movement like i have here to stop the you from moving up and down uh, and then the next one is the left button, and what this means is it'll lock off the movement for the left. And instead I'm making my own left movement. And basically it moves it left unless it's at the furthest left. Uh, and with this weight value it, it means that I can't like multi-press and uh, drop the coin while it's moving, because that caused some problems uh, in when I was testing it. Uh, and then to the right is the same thing, but it blocks it off to the right. And then the last one is the most complicated one. It's uh, the dropping of the token. And uh, you can drop it with any button I choose to drop it with. I've chosen um, A and B. And basically, uh, once you've pressed it, it then removes anything and then attaches its own thing that uh, basically blocks off all the buttons on the Game Boy. Uh, and then it stores the player position. And then it, it basically just moves it down if and it knows whether it's you know above a peg or it's not above a peg and it moves it down to the peg if it is above the peg and then once it's the peg it kind of initiates the uh uh this loop forever and once and obviously once it uh hits if it hits this one then it skips to row two and you see it's skipped here so in the loop forever you have to make sure that you have an end thing so once it reaches the y29 which is uh you know, down here, it then has a go to and it goes to this define, and this define is called the same thing, and it means it brings it out of the loop. Uh, and then, so every, you have a row run or, one or row two. I think row one is the, is, uh, the top one, and the row two is the middle one. Um, and basically, it just checks to see if it's, like, with one of them, it just hits it and goes either left or right. Uh, which I think is this this one, and if it's if it's uh, not allowed to go right, for example, uh, it will set that value as as the correct value. So it, the random, you know, the random is overruled, and it means that uh, when it checks to see which left or right value it is, it moves in the correct way. Uh, and then once it, like I said, once it gets to the bottom, it it takes it out of that loop, and then moves it down to the bottom of the thing, and then it obviously takes the token because you. You use the token. I could have put this anywhere as long as it's before the end. Um, I decided to do it uh, obviously in the start, in the uh, in this button press because I didn't want it to be, uh, you know, when the scene starts because the player might want to, you know, exit out. <coughs> yeah, so now that we have looked at the loop, we can look at this reward claim. So it then checks to see which of these, uh, basically, which uh, slots it's in. And then gives you the correct tokens based on that and tells you how many tokens you got. And then uh, obviously turns off that value of the next press. And uh, tells you if you got a new high score. And then if you run out of tokens, it brings you back to the title screen um, so that you can't continue playing. And if you and if uh, you have still got tokens, then it just sets you. It basically resets the scene by changing the scene and setting you back to where you started. Uh, it's as simple as that. And then obviously. That in itself is a game. Uh, obviously, it's a very luck-based game where you don't have much control. Um, but obviously, if I was to expand this scene here, we could have you know more prizes in the bottom. If we were to lower this, then it would be less luck and more about where you put it in. But obviously, luck still would be a very big factor. Um, so yeah, that's how I make make uh, these little things. This took me. Uh, a few hours yesterday making it. See, it's very uh, simple. It's only three scenes. Um, but I will be uploading it to Itch uh, very soon. I'll make some artwork for the Itch page. And uh, and then maybe next week I can look at the music with you guys and how we would uh, compose music for a game like this and uh, linking it into some of these things. For example, 
at the end when we claim a reward you kind of want to if it's a zero you kind of want to you know be like a sad music and if it's five happy music and if it's a one it's you know just a reward music uh and obviously when it's going down you want to be playing some cool music like leading in like almost like a drum roll uh and obviously you want a title title music uh but and obviously they don't have to be that long and but i will try and show you some of the uh musical things that i would uh, put into a, a thing like that and how and like uh what kind of software and techniques i'd use so yeah if you uh, enjoyed this video please uh, give it a like and uh, if you subscribe if you haven't already um obviously i haven't made many videos like this before where i've made something and then i've showed you i was gonna you know make this game with you guys but unfortunately i you might be able to hear it in my voice i've got a bit of a cold so i uh i refrained from doing that just so you didn't have to sift through my nasally voice um so yeah if you uh if you have any comments on this i'd love to hear them uh there will be a link in the description of the play on itch i'll be updating it as i continue with this and you can play a uh, solo surfer which this game will eventually be in and there'll be a link to that in the description as well uh, if you want to support me even more then go and check out my patreon uh, i've simplified the tiers of that so um i'd really appreciate if you guys check that out uh, thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video